The history of Porsche actually began with the birth of Ferdinand Porsche on September 3, 1875, in the Austro-Hungarian town of Mafersdorf, which is nowadays known as Czech Vratislavitz. It was this man, a descendant of Sudeten Germans, who stood at the origins of the birth of the automobile company. Ferdinand's father, Anton Porsche, was a master tinkerer, and dreamed that his son would follow in his footsteps. But the boy chose another way, and entered the technical school of Reichenberg, now it is Czech Liberec, while continuing to work part-time in his father's workshop. After his studies, Ferdinand got a job at Lohner Werk, a company that produced electric cars. In 1898 he began work on his first project. He wanted to design a truly revolutionary for the end of the 18th century, fast and compact car with electric drive. And a year later, Porsche presented his first invention to his boss, Lohner. His electric car was equipped with lead batteries and accelerated to a record at that time 40 kilometers per hour, but was very heavy and had only an hour's range. Nevertheless, it was a breakthrough, and Ferdinand was promoted to chief designer of the company. Already in 1900, the first front-wheel drive electric car, Lona Porsche, with 2.5 horsepower engines on the driving wheels, and no manual transmission, was presented at the exhibition. True, it cannot be said that it ran purely on electric power. Porsche demonstrated the first-ever hybrid propulsion system from an internal combustion engine supplemented by batteries and electric motors, for which he won the Grand Prix at the Paris World's Fair in 1900. But despite the universal acclaim, Ferdinand considered his idea not fully realized. Here's the world's first electric car. Six years later, Porsche actually headed the Viennese automobile company, Ostro Daimler, working there both as chief designer and technical director. Under his leadership, the company produced several car models and then retrained for military needs. During the First World War, Ferdinand developed various equipment, as well as engines for airplanes and airships, for which he was awarded the Kaiser's Cross of Merit and became an emeritus professor at the Vienna Technical University without higher education. In 1926, Porsche took over as chief engineer of Daimler-Benz AG, the future Mercedes, a Stuttgart-based company. There, for the first time in his life, he was engaged in the development of a racing car. The famous Mercedes S and SS sports models were also produced under his leadership, the story of the creation of Porsche. With a wealth of experience and managerial positions in large companies, Ferdinand Porsche came to open his own business. By that time he was already married for a long time, raising a daughter and a son. In April 1931 in Stuttgart, he founded the design office doctoring Dottore HC F Porsche GmbH. Its goal was to develop engines of all types as well as automobiles and motorcycles. Already two years later, the Bureau received a large government order. What it was necessary to create, you will learn below. While it is worth saying that this was not the only project of the Bureau of Ferdinand Porsche. In the 1930s, the famous designer and engineer was invited to the USSR not just to visit aircraft and tank factories, but to move with his firm to Russia forever and develop industry there. Porsche refused, and later, already during the war, German intelligence forced him to reveal the secrets of Allied machine building. Development of the first cars. So we tell you what a large state order was received by the Porsche Design Bureau. By order of Adolf Hitler himself, Ferdinand had to create a strong and reliable car for the people of Germany which would cost no more than 1,000 Reichsmarks and would be assembled at a new modern factory as a symbol of the renewed Germany. The name of the future car was already ready, Volkswagen, which translates as people's car. It is worth to say that Ferdinand at that moment was already working on the creation of a full-fledged own car, Porsche Type 60. Later in history, these sketches served to create a prototype, the drawings of which Porsche sent to the Chancellor in early 1934. The contract was signed, but due to the restrictive conditions that hampered the work, the technical drawings for the three models were not ready until a full two years later. In fact, Porsche was at the origin of the history of the creation of the automobile company Volkswagenwerk GmbH, opened in 1937. And he also created the prototype of the future legend of the automobile industry, the best-selling car in the history of Volkswagen Käfer, Volkswagen Beetle, the second name of which is Volkswagen Beetle. 
Having fulfilled the state order, Ferdinand started to develop his own model, Porsche 64 for the Berlin Rome Marathon 1939, which never took place because of the outbreak of the Second World War. The Second World War It is not surprising that in wartime the state apparatus once again turned to the legendary designer Ferdinand Porsche. Up to 1943, his bureau developed and produced exclusively for the needs of the army. These were staff cars, all-terrain vehicles, amphibians. The head of Porsche was also directly involved in the creation of heavy and extra-heavy tanks and the Ferdinand SAU. Toward the end of 1943, the Bureau was practically destroyed by Allied aircraft. Everything that was saved from the equipment and documentation, father and son Porsche, by the way, also Ferdinand or Ferry, as he was called for short, moved to a sawmill building on the outskirts of the Austrian town of Gmund. It was there that they remained until the end of the war. In December 1945, they were both arrested by order of the French Ministry of Justice on charges of war crimes. The son was released after four months, but Ferdinand served almost two years in prison until the charges were dropped. First own cars. While Ferdinand Sr. was in prison, Ferry decided to produce his own Porsche cars in Gmunda. Together with a couple of engineers he knew, he assembled a Porsche 356 prototype with an aluminum open body, as well as many Volkswagen Kaifer components, and began preparing for series production. By this point in 1947, his father had been released from prison, but his health had already been compromised by his imprisonment, so he decided to step back and only advise his son. When Ferry's project was certified, the question of funding came up. After the war, Austria blocked all accounts and property of German citizens on its territory, but father and son Porsche managed to find investors and produce the first cars. In early 1950, Porsche returned to its native Stuttgart and a year later, its founder died of a stroke. But the design spirit of the Bureau did not die with him. Ferry developed and multiplied his father's achievements. For some time, the production of the company was located in the rented workshops of the bodybuilding company Reuter. Under the brand Porsche Coupes, convertibles, engines, designs were constantly modernized, and parts from Volkswagen were eventually replaced by their own. In addition, the firm at the same time created models for racing, such as 550 Spider, 718 and others. The popularity and sales of Porsche as a new car brand, not just a design office, grew steadily not only in its native Germany, but throughout Europe, entering the American market. It wasn't long before the modified Porsche 356 series models reached the North American continent. With the entry into a new market, there was a need for brand recognition. If until 1952 on the hoods of Porsche cars were applied only the brand name, now the management was concerned about the development of the logo and asked for help to the Austrian designer Franz Xavier Reimspiss. The artist embodied in the historical emblem of the company Porsche red-black stripes and deer antlers, symbols of the kingdom of Württemberg, the capital of which was Stuttgart, and also added a galloping stallion in the centre, as a reminder that the city was founded in 950 as a horse farm. In addition to the logo, two separate versions of the Porsche 356 were produced in limited editions especially for the American market. The America Roadster, 1952 to 1953, and the Speedster, 1955. In the history of the company, Active promotion to the American market was promoted by participation of Porsche sports cars in the Carrera Panamericana races in the early 50s. After Hans Hermann took third place in 1954 in the Porsche 550 Spider, sales of German cars in the US began to grow like mushrooms after rain. Legendary model launches. The Porsche 356 is the first production model that paved the way to the world for the history of the German brand. It was produced from 1948 to 1965 in modifications A, B, C. In total, more than 76,000 cars of all modifications were made and sold. In parallel with the production and quite decent for a small family business sales of the 356th model, the development of Porsche 695 prototype was underway. But to move to a new model was a risky step. In case of failure, the company would go bankrupt. After almost ten years of deliberation, the development became obsolete. 
and the company's management represented by Ferry Porsche and his sons, finally presented a new model in Frankfurt. In the history of the brand, Porsche 911 is a calling card, more powerful, comfortable and modern compared to the previous one. The design for it was designed by Ferdinand Alexander Butzi Porsche, grandson of the founder. Initially it was planned to be released with the code 901, but it turned out that such a code was already reserved for the Peugeot brand, so the index had to be urgently changed. The first versions of the Porsche 911 were equipped with a 2-litre engine with 130 horsepower. Two years later, in 1966, its first modification with an open body and glass roof was released, which was very popular. But the real hit were sporty modifications of the 911, Carrera RS 2.7 and Carrera RSR, released in the early 1970s as a tribute to the famous Carrera Panamericana races and very popular in the United States. The 912, 1965 to 1969, was a cheapened version of the 911 and was coldly welcomed, as the company's established target audience expected better quality regardless of price. Also the joint with Volkswagen Brainchild under the name VW Porsche 914, 1970 to 1976, did not live up to expectations. For seven years of production was sold a little more than 100,000 of these cars. It should be noted that in 1972, the company Dr. Ingarte C.F. Porsche KG changed its legal status from LLC to OJSC. It is also important to specify that at the helm of the company has always stood the Porsche family, consisting of two branches. One came from Ferry and bore the surname of the founder, and the second from his sister Louise, who became Peach after marriage. But all were direct descendants of the first Ferdinand. However, after the restructuring, the family lost the fullness of power, and the share of the peach branch was very much reduced. As a result, Ferdinand's grandson in this line went to raise the Audi concern, and then many years later, he also saved Volkswagen from bankruptcy, and Ferdinand Alexander Porsche, Ferry's son and designer of the legendary 911 model, decided to open his own subsidiary, Porsche Design, where he started producing luxury accessories for the brand's fans. Porsche 928 produced from 1977 to 1995, recognized as the best European car in 1978. And the first and only time the brand was honored with such an award, and in general the first sports car to receive such a status. Its distinction was in the V-shaped with eight-cylinder engine. Porsche 924, the first production model in the history of the company with a liquid-cooled engine, was produced from 1976 to 1988. Initially, it was also developed together with Volkswagen, but the management of the second company doubted the feasibility. In the end, Porsche bought the project and did not lose out. This series was repeatedly modernized and very well bought, more than 150,000 copies. Later, the successor of Porsche 944 with extended fenders like 924 Carrera GT was produced. A total of 160,944S were sold with various modifications, SS2, Turbo, Cabriolet. Despite the generally good results of Furman's models, Ferry Porsche sent his resignation. The reason for this was the refusal to modernize the 911 in favor of new models, while the iconic series was bought much better. If it had continued to be produced all this time, the company would have made a lot more profit. Porsche's American manager, Peter Schutz, was appointed as the new CEO. Under him, Porsche's flagship brand status returned to the 911. In the early 80s, it got a convertible modification, and a year later, a reinforced version of 911 Carrera. Even later, the model range was supplemented with Turbo, Carrera Club Sport, and other improved copies. The Porsche 959 is a historic model produced for the 1980 World Rally Championship. Schutz decided to demonstrate the full engineering potential and the company really made a sensation, both in design and revolutionary technological stuffing. This model twice took first place in the Paris-Dakar rally, and was recognized as the most technologically advanced and advanced model of the 1980s, the best sports car of those years according to Sports Car International, and the best Porsche of all time according to the editors of Auto, Moto and Sport. The paradox is that the 959 lineup was unprofitable for the company, 
but it also gave a strong impetus to the development of sports cars. The Porsche 959 is a historic model produced for the 1980 World Rally Championship. Schutz decided to demonstrate the full engineering potential, and the company really made a sensation with both design and revolutionary technological stuffing. This model twice took first place in the Paris Dakar Rally, and was recognised as the most technologically advanced and advanced model of the 1980s. The best sports car of those years, according to Sports Car International, and the best Porsche of all time, according to the editors of Auto, Moto and Sport. The paradox is that the 959 lineup was unprofitable for the company, but it also gave a strong impetus to the development of sports cars, a new age. The arrival of Wendelin Wiedeking marked a new era in Porsche's history, but it was not until 1996 when the company introduced the Porsche 986 Boxster, a mid-engined roadster, it became a new symbol and business card of the renewed brand. Its designer, Harm Lagai, was inspired by the look of the early iconic 550 Spider and 356 Speedster models. It was the brand's first car designed initially open. Previously, only modifications of closed ones were convertibles. Another advantage of the novelty was in the relatively affordable price without loss of quality. Not surprisingly, the market met it very warmly. Up to 2003, this model headed the top sales of the company, until it was displaced by the Porsche 955 Cayenne. But this was not the only successful novelty. In 1997, another one was presented, 996 Carrera, the fifth generation of the 911 family, which was also received very warmly. According to the British magazine Evo, it became the sports car of the year. Then there were Carrera 4, GT2, GT3, and the new flagship 996 Turbo, equipped with new generation engines and all sorts of technical chips, as well as other racing and sports cars. But the main event and the most unusual car in the history of the brand was the Porsche Cayenne SUV, developed together with Volkswagen and put on sale in 2002. It was so out of the company's lineup that the public's reaction to the novelty was ambiguous. Nevertheless, it is the Cayenne that still remains the most popular car of the brand, having undergone more than one modification. Another grandiose event in the history of Porsche, but already in the racing world, was the supercar Carrera GT, which became the fastest production car at the Nordschleife Nürburgring. But unfortunately, new safety requirements were introduced in the USA, because of which the production of the supercar stopped. Only 1,270 of the planned 1,500 were produced. In the future, the company did not risk with revolutionary ideas, only modernising the good old classic 911. Its next descendant with the Index 997 came off the assembly line in 2004 and received modifications according to the structure that became classic for the company Carrera, Targa, GT2, GT3, Turbo. In 2005, the new Boxster and Cayman were presented, as well as new modifications of existing models. In 2009 through 2019, the production Panamera, Panamera S, Panamera Turbo, 911 Turbo S, racing GT3 R hybrid, with 640 GP under the hood, as well as the fastest road-going 911 GT2 RS and a new hybrid concept, 918 with 886 GP, updated Porsche Cayenne Coupe and Cayenne Turbo Coupe were released. And most recently, in 2020, the world saw the first in the history of the Porsche brand electric sports car model Taycan, which broke sales records and became the best in its class. It has collected more than 50 international awards and is recognised as the most innovative car in the world. The electric car was developed in line with the brand's decarbonisation programme, aimed at achieving a CO2 neutral balance in the production chain by 2030. More than 1 billion euros are planned to be invested in this program over 10 years. All Porsche production is already CO2 neutral from 2021. The Taycan Cross Turismo is the first model to be CO2 neutral over its entire lifetime. By 2025, half of all new Porsche models will be equipped with an electric motor, and in 2030, this figure will rise to 80%. So the new millennium has become not just an era of revitalization for the company, but a truly golden age in the history of Porsche cars. 
racing. In fact, since the company was founded, Porsche's history has revolved around the world of racing. Even the very first model Ferdinand Porsche developed for rallying. In 1951, a specially designed version of the Porsche 356, with an aluminum body won at Le Mans. Since then, sporty and racing Porsche cars have constantly participated and received awards in various races, such as Carrera Panamericana, Formula One, Targa Florio and others, including rally championships in Monte Carlo and Paris Dakar. The Porsche brand has more than 28,000 victories to its credit. The more passionate a person is about what they do, the more he can achieve, that it is thanks to Ferdinand Porsche. Of German automobiles have gained their high reputation first and foremost, first of all, as the most reliable, rugged and prestigious. And the words that Ferdinand once said are still, is still known by all of us, if you want to do something well, do it yourself. Friends, how do you personally feel about this brand of car, and if you've had any experience driving a Porsche? Be sure to write your opinion in, in the comments, and rate the video if you like it, and see you soon. Bye.